Hi, I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and today we're going to talk about the Gold Bug Pro and how to set it up for prospecting, how to be successful when you set it up and get it going, what you need to know to go out and find nuggets. So I recently did a video on the Gold Bug Pro and why I thought it was the the best all-around detector at the lowest cost that was sensitive enough to find gold that it was what you need to go out and find gold now you can buy more expensive detectors hey no doubt about that I own a bunch of them and I use them but if you want the most bang for your buck and you want the detector that has the sensitivity to find small gold nuggets at the lowest price because well if you can't afford one of those really much more expensive high performance units this is the one that you ought to be thinking about because like I say it's the best bang for the buck and the best low cost that still has the sensitivity that you need so I got a number of questions about it like I say I got some guys who said well the so-and-so detector is better and it's, it's true but like I say there there are detectors out there that perform better but cost a lot more um, but I also got comments that said, hey, can you tell us how you set up the Gold Bug Pro when you use it and go out and find gold with it? Well, that sounds like a good idea to me. So that's what we're here to do today. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I set up the Gold Bug Pro to go out and find gold. Fisher also has another detector called the Tech, well, it's, it's the same company that makes Fisher called Technetics the Technetics G2 and the G2 is functionally the same detector it has a, well, a few little bit minor differences but it's functionally as far as sensitivity and stuff it's the same detector so what we talk about today is going to be for the Gold Bug Pro but it also applies to the G2 just as much and honestly it applies to a lot of BLF detectors what we're going to talk about today so strap in stay tuned we're going to go over the whole nine yards and get you confident in what you need to know to go out and find your own gold. The first thing I want to talk about is what coil to use. Now some versions of this, some versions of this detector come with this larger coil. And this larger coil is a great coil for finding coins and relics and jewelry and other stuff. And uh, if you want to use it for general purpose use, uh, this is the coil I recommend. But if you're out looking for gold nuggets, which is what I want to talk about today because gold nuggets is my thing, then you want this smaller coil, the, uh, the little round coil. It's a double D type coil, so it has a, a sensitivity overlap in the middle. And this is the coil you want to be using okay now um, one of the things about VLF detectors which is the gold bug pro belongs to the class of, of metal detectors known as a VLF one of the important things about it is you want to get it ground balanced properly so I'm going to turn this on and we're going to uh, set the threshold Now, one of the things about the threshold that I want to say before we get to ground balancing is you want the threshold to be just a slight sound. Now, I don't know if you can hear that on this recording, but it, it's buzzing. I can hear it. It's not loud, you know. You know, it's not like that. Just a little slight, slight kind of sound that's where you want to set the threshold and you want to put it in all metal mode that's another thing is you know th this comes with an all metal and a discrimination mode and you may say to yourself well you know there's a lot of trash out in these places I want to run it in discrimination well the problem is you lose a lot of sensitivity going in discrimination how metal detectors work is they take the signal that comes from the coil that they receive from the ground and they process it through electronic filters and the more filters you add the more sensitivity you lose so if you add several filters to 
discriminate out properly, you're going to lose a lot of sensitivity. So uh, back to ground balance, which is where I started. Um, this machine does not manual ground balance. I mean, it, it, it has an automatic ground balance. It's called a ground grab system. And what happens is, is as the metal detector goes over the ground, it's collecting information. And when you press the GG button in the middle between the, the two knobs, you get a ground balance adjustment. And what you want to do is pump it up and down until it's not giving you any unusual change in signal. In other words, the threshold sounds basically the same as it did whether you're up or down. The threshold sounds the same. That means it's ground balance. And you need to do that before you start detecting. And honestly, with a VLF, you'll need to do it regularly during the day. In some places, you'll need to do it every few minutes. Other places, you may be able to go a half an hour or an hour between ground balancing. But it's important that you keep the detector ground balance because it allows the detector to be at its maximum sensitivity. When it's out of ground balance, it's not at the same level of sensitivity. You're, you're losing sensitivity by being out of ground balance. So always remember to regularly press the GG button in the center and pump it up and down. See, I'm not hearing it change as it goes up and down. When it's out of ground balance, as you, you lift it up, you'll hear um, different noises. You'll hear... So here's what it would sound like if the detector were out of ground balance. See how it making, makes a sound as the coil moves toward the ground? That shows it's out of ground balance. So I'm going to hit the ground grab button and we're going to ground balance out. So here's another example. So I'm hitting the button. Now, after I press the ground grab button and held it in for a little bit, you can hear it's the same whether whether you're moving toward the soil or pulling away from it. And now I'm ready to hunt this area. And when I'm ground balanced, I'm less likely to find hot rocks. I still will find hot rocks, but they're less pronounced. So here is the display of the Goldbug Pro. And I've got it in all metal mode, which is what I strongly urge you to use if you are looking for gold. Simply because by switching to discrimination mode, you lose a lot of sensitivity. Now, if you're looking for coins or rings or that sort of thing, big objects, then, you know, maybe going into um, discrimination mode is a good idea. But... For looking for gold, you give up so much sensitivity by going into discrimination mode that I urge you strongly to stay in all metal mode. But with all metal mode, you can do some rough discrimination, and we're going to talk about that here shortly. So here is the screen. The first thing I'm going to show you, you see I've circled here in green, is the it says GG and that is the ground grab. That's your ground balance button. So when I show you about ground balancing and pumping the coil up and down, that is the button you'll be pressing there in the center. It's just a, a one of those depressed buttons. It's not a button that sticks up much. It just sticks up a little tiny bit. Now your knobs to the side, this is the knob on the left, and this is the power and gain button. So at the bottom it goes snap and then turns the gain up as you go. A lot of people try to run this thing in the maximum gain. And as you can see here, that's what I'm doing in this particular case because the ground is not excessively uh, noisy and there's not an excessive number of hot rocks. When the detector gets noisy and you pump it up and down with the ground grab and try and ground balance it, 
and it still is really noisy, you need to turn the gain down a little bit. I talk about this on the video. And then the threshold sound, when you're running in all metal, um, you turn the threshold up to a point where it's a faint, you know, that kind of sound that's not loud, but, um, but you can hear it, okay? So you can hear when the threshold changes. And then here are the numbers on the screen that we're going to talk about more when we go over our individual targets. The ones I've circled in yellow, the big number and the small number, the small number, which here in this example is 90.7, is what the ground balance is set to on the machine. That's just telling you what, what the ground balance is currently set at. And the big number, 22 in this particular example, is unfortunately probably the least useful number on the screen. I don't know why they made it the biggest, because it's a combination of the ground and the target in any target that you're going over. Now, if you're going over just ground, you would expect this number to be close to the number that your ground balance is set at. So if uh, I were, I'm here in this example going over a target. So that's why it's wildly different because the target plus the ground is 22, whereas the ground balance is 90.7. Um, that those are obviously wildly far apart. And if I were just going over the ground and there were that kind of difference, then I would need to press the ground grab button and readjust the ground. But the truth is I'm going over a target and you don't want to uh, make any changes based on what the target is. Now you might think that you could use this number for discrimination. It's not uh, the, the numbers I've circled, the things I've circled in red, we're going to talk about those in a second, are uh, something that you can use for rough discrimination while you're in the all metal mode. So anyway, um, if you're just going over ground and you're getting numbers 85 or, you know, and the setting is 90, that's fine. If you're going over uh, ground and you're getting numbers uh, 60 and the ground balance is set at 90, then you want to press ground and grab and re readjust your ground balance. So anyway, to the things that I've circled in red in this picture, the top is an arc that goes across and things in the middle-ish of this are going to be non-ferrous things that you're going to want to dig, okay? But even more important is the one over in the lower left corner. You see in this particular shot, it says uh, there's nothing actually displayed. It, it, there's, it says FE304, and there's no bars above it. So FE304 is actually the chemical symbol for magnetite. I don't know why they didn't just write magnetite. Um, and this one, this shows that this object is a non-ferrous object. Okay, it's telling me that with a readout on the arc that's in the middle and a uh, iron bar reading that is no bars, zero bars, um, then it's highly likely that this is a non-ferrous target. Now, I will tell you that, you know, with any discrimination system, sometimes the systems get fooled and um, combinations of hot rocks and odd uh, rusty iron objects can fool systems. Uh, I strongly urge you, if you're going to try and use uh, this sort of discrimination, which is, it is what I do, so I recommend it. Um, if you're going to do this kind of rough discrimination, do review my video on achieving successful or achieving accurate discrimination. It's important. It's about discrimination when you're in the gold fields. Um, and I will put a link to it in the description below, but I'll also put a card linking up above here. Um, it's important that you take a close look or listen closely to the lessons that are in that video. I won't take the, all the time that's necessary to go back over that again, but do take a look at that other video.
Okay, this is going to be the performance segment of our video, and we're going to take a look at a few different things. Now, on the the right here, I have, like I say, a lead target. In the middle, I have a hot rock. And on the far side, I have an iron target. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you listen to the targets now. And then I'm also going to take pictures of the screen. And then I can draw on the, the, uh, on the video presentation and show you on the screen what... Uh, what you're supposed to be looking for and what is indicated by each target, okay? All right, so first let's go over the lead, all right? This is the, it's basically a little 22 bullet is what it is. You can see, you're getting, that's the sound you get, that, okay? And I'm going to take pictures of that. So finally, here's so finally here's the screen as we go over the uh, simulated gold nugget, which is a, just a little bit of lead. And you can see that the uh, iron probability bars in the lower left hand side are zero. There's no bars and the arc display across the top is in the middle this is telling me that i'm going across a, a non-ferrous target okay so this is a target if you're in the gold fields you want to dig it and here i've circled that to show you the high probability uh, of not iron in the lower left hand corner and the arc uh, display uh, the, the selection is across the middle, which tells you that, again, it's a, a non-ferrous target, which is stuff you want to dig if you're out in the gold fields. Okay, so the next target we're going to go over is a hot rock. And I'm going to point out to you the difference between that sound, which represented an, a nugget or a piece of lead, and... Now, this kind of sound is called a boing sound, and, and it, it signals after it's passed over it. If you look, when I'm passing over it this way, it actually signals a little bit beyond, and when I'm swinging the coil over it, it signals a little bit beyond where the target is. And the same thing when I'm coming this way. So it, it, it's a little bit this way, on swinging in this way, and, and actually when you look at it and see a target seems to be here, and then if you're swinging the other way, it seems to be there, it seems to be here, it seems to be there. That boing, and you hear that boinging sound. Boing. It, it kind of, that, that's, that's what prospectors call a boing type hot rock sound. Okay, remember then to, just to compare it to the lead. It, it's versus see that there's a the different sound between the hot rocks. Now finally we're going to go over the lead, and 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 I'm I'm going to now show you pictures of, of the hot rock actually. Let's let's do pictures. Okay, so this is the response of the detector when we're going over a um, hot rock. Basically, this is a small chunk of magnetite is what it is. And you'll see that the arc button across the top is, or the arc display across the top is reading on the far right-hand side. And the FE3 bars that are over on the far lower left are reading a full five bars so the machine is telling you that um, what you found what it's beeping on is a hot rock okay and so i've circled these you can see i've circled the display on the far left 
and the, all the bars on the lower i'm sorry the display on the, the arc display it's showing on the far right and then in the lower left the magnetite or i this is the the bars basically on the lower left are uh, basically an iron probability display so um, what it's telling you is it's super highly likely to be iron uh, or iron mineral and you can see that that the uh, ground display is close to the, I got 91 and 90.7 so you know they're close but anyway this is telling you that the sound you heard and the target we're going over is a hot rock an iron hot rock and now let's do the iron target okay <laughs> hear that you know it, it doesn't quite have the same boing sound but it sounds a lot different than the lead I'm getting actually a double target sound on the iron now I'm going to show you now a picture of the screen as I go over the iron target and explain to you what that means. Okay, so here's the display as we go over a piece of, of actual iron. So I'm going over iron here and the display is showing um, it's showing uh, that uh, the arc display is over on the far left and the prob iron probability bars are full so again we're getting over a piece of iron and this is telling me that again it's not a target that i want to dig so here's a target that i've found that i think is a non-ferrous target Now I'm going to take a picture of the screen as I'm going over the target so you can see and understand that and I'll talk to you about it. And, but even though this is a gold mine and I have found gold here before, um, there's a lot of trash here. The locals have shot this place up. There's a lot of, you know, brass shell casings, bullet fragments. Uh, there's even aluminum can pieces and parts. So it could be gold. I hope that it is, right? But you got to be willing to dig a little trash and uh, at least the discrimination will help you to eliminate some of the trash that you did. So I'm going to take a picture of the screen right now as I go over it and you're going to be able to see that. Now here is that target that I dug that I did the, the uh, that I'm doing the um, field dig. This is not something I planted, but it's a target that I found. And you can see in on, on the display that just like we were um, showing before, the arc display is across the middle and the iron probability is low. Now, you know, you got to give some room for this. Um, in the middle is it basically anything in the middle of the arc display more or less is stuff you want to dig and the iron probability on the lower left we've got one bar here but that's fine um, I would dig anything that gets a solid signal of one or two bars zero one or two bars uh, I'm gonna dig it if it's three four five bars uh, three I might dig it if especially if it were in an area where I'd found gold already in the immediate area uh, four and five probably not I'm probably gonna walk away from those now targets do bounce around and uh, give you various indications and again um, like I recommended earlier you really should look at my video on achieving accurate discrimination because it has a lot of important information about what these discriminations mean and how to get a solid reading instead of getting one that just bounces and bounces and bounces all around because if you're not doing it right you can certainly get uh, readings that say iron not iron iron not iron iron not iron 
And then, you know, what does that really mean? Um, look at the video for accurate discrimination because it will help you understand a lot of this. And sometimes the detector just doesn't know. That's the third option. Basically, it's you got to accept that the detector has three readings, iron, not iron, and I don't know. Uh, so anyway, take a look at that video. But this is what I got on that target. So now that you've had a chance to see the screen, let's uh, dig it out of the ground and find out what it is. I've got my scoop. I've got my pick. Let's dig her out. Sure looks like non-ferrous to me. I'll usually dig a small hole and see if I can get the target out of the hole. I've got it out of the hole. It's in the dig pile. So actually I never even used my pick because the ground is so soft. Okay. It appears to be in my scoop. In the scoop. In the scoop. In my hand. In the scoop. In the scoop. Okay, it was non ferrous. The machine was right. All right. Now, I hate to say it, but it's a really old piece of buckshot. Um, it, it's lead. It's got the white coating on it that lead gets in the ground around here after it's been sitting for 50 years or more. And I can feel that it's heavy and see that it's round, but I successfully dug a piece of buckshot. And if that would have been gold, I'd have gotten exactly the same kind of signal. So you can see that the Gold Bug Pro works really well. Again, um, you know, no detector really discriminates lead from gold. But uh, this one will do a good job of discriminating hot rocks and iron trash. So that cuts down on a lot of the stuff that you might have to dig. And uh, I hope that you'll feel like now, if you have a Gold Bug Pro or are interested in buying one, that you'll feel confident about it and that you'll be able to um, go out and use it properly. Here, let me turn this down. <laughs> Talking against me. So hopefully when you go out, you'll be able to use it competently. You'll know how to set it up to find gold with it and be successful or find lead as the case may be. And that you'll have a good success with it and you'll know what you need to know to set it up properly and run it properly and read the detector and know what it's telling you and understand the sounds. So after I finished the video and, uh, and was done. I had about an hour left uh, toward, till the end of the day, and I thought, well, I'll just take my detector out and do a little detecting on my own. And I did, and sure enough, I wasn't filming, but I found a nice little gold nugget. And so it just proves that this detector works well, and you can find some gold with it. Now, if you want to be a more successful prospector, which you probably do if you're watching this video. I wrote an entire book about prospecting, about finding gold. It's called Fistful of Gold. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're gonna find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other 
um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand you don't need a PhD to go out and find gold but the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people so it's in this book uh, if you're interested about finding gold panning sluicing nugget detecting uh, dry washing the geology of gold deposits and how they form it's all in here and like I say it's more than 350 pages long so if you'll just go to the description underneath this video um, you can take a look I've got a link in there to take you to Amazon to the site where the book is sold and I think you'll you'll really enjoy it take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this and have really liked the book it has a, a very very high rating for a book and also I have a, a website my own free website that uh, you can take a look at um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold a lot of good information stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book and so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description so take a look in the description and you can click on the uh, the link and it'll take you to my website and finally if you like this presentation I've got a lot more coming out here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple years back in one area um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold gemstones hard rock placer a lot of metal detecting there'll be lots of metal detecting stuff so if you really enjoyed this click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff and hit the like button as well and please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say and I promise to answer any questions you have so if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need so thanks a lot and um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again real soon